All right, 390 Wagon Master here, here with uh, radio number three out of the four radios that Kelly Dog, UDX 440 down in St. George, Utah, was so nice to donate to the channel for content. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So this radio came from an estate and this house was full uh, from top to bottom, corner to corner, wall to wall with radio gear scanners some ham radio stuff and some cb stuff so kelly dog brought a few units that he thought i'd be interested in and so generally i'm not interested in am only 23 channel radios um, but i do have a weakness for the jc pennies and the sears radios and uh this is a jc penny forgive me if i call this a sears but there were certain models that looked pretty pretty identical back then and i always confuse the two but anyway this is a jc pennies uh, pinto 23 channel um am 23 channel base station four pin mic jack on the front uh headphone jack real headphone jack so a quarter inch uh, mono jack and we have uh anl volume uh, delta tune basically fine tuning for receive um, and that is squelch over there rotary channel selector and then a s meter for uh, input signal strength and uh, modulation meter it's kind of interesting and the rf power meter relative rf powder power meter i should say and then the mic clip and on this radio, we don't have any of the ever so popular uh, 1970s uh, government serial number information on there. I mean, a lot of radios I've been seeing lately have had uh, people's serial numbers scribed into them. And uh, that was kind of a thing in the 70s. I mean, CB radio and underdash car stereo theft was rampant back then. So, right, people would write their name, um, address, telephone number, social security numbers, they would engrave them onto the back of CB radios in that cheetah. I found that, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you saw the cheetah in part one, there was a um, social security number on the back. Same thing on the, um, the Panasonic radio as well. Nothing on here. Okay, anyway, quit rambling. All right, so on the back panel, we have our SO239, um, coax connector little adjustment here for tvi filter and something that i think is kind of cool again quarter inch headphone jacks for external speaker and pa and then um the the uh, ac 110 120 uh power connector and a little ground lug right here with a uh, free courtesy ground lug and then this is a base mobile so um, you can plug into this little uh, 0.025 um, spade connector a fused 12 volt wire. So 12 volts ground, all right? And usually you see on these bases, right? Especially like the units, but they'll have a, um, a 12 volt, the 110 switch where you actually switch it. However, this radio is kind of cool does something a little different and what it is here is you've got this little index right here and I hope you can see that on camera and then of course we have this on the power plug too and you know a lot of times that's a guide right to not get the polarity wrong but um, what this doubles as is this is actually a switch and I think these are really cool we'll we'll check it out when we tear it apart but let me see if I can do this so I'm not um, interfering with the camera Anyway, when we plug in that plug, we take and we break this connection that this makes to the radio. Because there's a, like a power supply somewhere, probably over here generally, I'm going to assume. Uh, because I believe the radio itself is here. Looks like maybe a mobile chassis slid in there, but we'll see. Anyway, um, so the power supply is probably over here. And... We have, uh, we'll have like a, 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 a 12 volt wire that'll go from here to here 
And then on the other side of the switch, it'll go to the board or maybe to the power supply board to, to so they only make one connection here. I don't know. But anyway, so basically when there's no AC plug in here and this little tab is up, it makes the connection. So when you give this 12 volts and this ground, the radio will run. And then when you plug this in, it will push this little tab down and it'll break that connection. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, all right, so anyway, there's the rear panel. And um, let's uh, let's plug her in. So while we're getting ready here, now I had to re-solder this coax connector. This thing, I've had this thing for 15 years and it's getting kind of shaggy, so I haven't tested it before we go on camera here. Let's see, oh, and then that needs, this is gonna need a, um, let me uh, pull one out of the 2000 here. This is gonna need a uh, quarter inch jack. So we'll go from eighth inch to quarter inch. And uh, let's see here. Um, this is PA, so we'll do PA and then we'll let the speaker fire from inside the debris. Well, that just went in there really nice and smooth. Okay. Well, anyway, um, so yeah, this is the first time turn on. Now I've been finding newspapers from 2001 and 2003 era. And so I'm gonna assume that it hasn't been fired up since then, but gosh knows, who knows how many decades that uh, it's been since it was um, turned on before that. Maybe never, maybe not since the 70s. Speaking of which, I really don't know anything about this radio, however, by just the looks of it and previous experiment or, or experience with um, uh, Pinto type rigs, JC Penny rigs, this look and this setup, and I believe there's going to be a mobile chassis in there. This is about, I'm going to take a guess now, about 73 or 74, 1973 or 74. Okay, so here we go. Um, <laughs> here we go. So, um, I know there's going to be guys out there. No, he's going to blow a capacitor. Well, who knows? That might be actually kind of fun. I was asked this on the radio the other day. Do you, um, so I'm just kind of waiting to see if anything happens here. But um, do you turn these on and test them before you use them? And the answer is absolutely no. Two reasons. I want to keep this organic, right? I want to keep this channel organic. Like I want to see, I want you to see my failures. I want you to see my success. Okay. So that being said, if we turn one of these on and smokes, um, I think that'd be kind of cool. I mean, I don't want it to, you know what I'm saying? But if it does, it'll be like live on air and it's organic and real. And so far, fingers crossed, knock on Formica somewhere down there. Um, this does not happen. I don't want them to blow. However, if they did, yeah, you know, then you can follow me on the journey to um, to repair it or to attempt to repair it. So anyway, another thing that intrigued me about this radio was not only is it a J.C. Penney's Pinto, but I had to go and check this and make sure I wasn't seeing things. This is an adjustable A&L. Is that like cool or what? So it's not on a switch. It's just not A&L on off. It's adjustable. So that's going to be pretty cool to see. I can't wait to see that. Um Anyway, the volume, fine tune, and squelch. So let's, let's see, are we in PA mode? Let's turn it on and find out. Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Okay, now we're gonna need the mic plugged in. Are we smoking? Four pin mic. I don't know the wiring to this. A little bit of hum. Uh, can you hear that, you guys? A little bit of hum. Even though, is that on? Oh wow, it does key up. Okay, so let's go on PA. Okay, so I guess I was on my, okay, well I plugged into the wrong speaker. So let's just do this. We have volume, um, we're on channel four. So, well, let's go to 23. Oh wow, look at that. This channel selector is like backwards. Oh, that's that's weird. All right. Um, all right, let's see if we key up. 
We do? Okay. Um, let's check out that power meter, see what we got over there. This is we're doing two. Oh, we're de demodulating. I wonder if... Yeah, the coax is good. Okay, right? Now, I'm having problems with this coax, you guys. Oh, man. Don't you hate that? At the most, like, inopportune time. All right, that's... You know what I'm going to end up doing? I think I'm just going to end up just redoing that connector. Um... As luck would have it, I was going through some extra cables here and trying to figure out what's usable and what's not. Sorry about this, you guys. That just that connector acted weird, and I don't really want to fry a radio just because of a stinking RCA or a, I'm sorry, not an RCA coax connector. Where are we at here now? Okay, so we're back up to that whopping two watts what does it put out on one? Oh, almost three okay well she's gonna need some alignment action all right let's check all modes and functions so um we're on channel one let's start down there my little handy dandy test device here okay one two three oh there we go one two three one two three okay so we have receive on channel one we have uh, channel one, channel one, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's got some pretty nice, it's, it's got some good modulation, actually. Whoa, reverse swinging. Look at that. Can you see that over there, guys? That's not good. Um, now, just so you know, like modulation meters on, you know, this was like a thing back then, right? And... They're actually fairly rel. Most of them are fairly relative. Hello. <whistles> However, this one's kind of cheap. But anyway, hello. One, two, three. Okay, so we'll go back to wattage. Anyway, that's fun though. Hello, radio. Hardly everything, anything's ever hit 100% on that meter. However, I do like my old Royce meter better than uh, the big fancy schmancy ones um, because. Um, the uh, about one through five watt uh, part of that beater is extremely accurate. So I always like that meter anyway. And I can read that one better than I can my bird, honestly. It's all relative, bro boys. All right, so channel one works. Okay, let's, uh, so I'm, I'm fairly confident that crystal's fine. So let's go to, uh, let's see, here's, there's a one, two, three, four. Let's do this one. Let's go here. This will be our next crystal. Hello, one, two, three. Oh, that thing sounds great. Hello, one, two, three. We have receive. Very cool. It sounds better than walkie talkie. One, two, three. Oh, whoops, right? One, two, three. Okay. We have audio. One, two, three. Let's see if I can get the power level in that shot there. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Gosh, I keep doing that again. One, two, three, one, two, three. We're looking good. We got it right there. One, two, three. Oh, that didn't sound too good. Hello, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right. Hmm. What are we at here on wattage? Yeah, yeah, we're starting to fall. Uh, wait, what am I thinking here? What's going on? Okay, hold on a minute. So we've got 19. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We got night. We have 19. We have channel 19. What's going on here? Make sure I'm not freaking out. One, two, three, four. We have 20. Yeah, that's right. One, two, three, one. Oh, look at that. Sounds like we're bleeding over. Okay, I don't... Wow, this is kind of wild. 
my RF power really dropped down below two watts. Okay, so let's go back here. Something's going on. One, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, I'm bleeding on myself. Well, 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 that's interesting. All right, well, I think I know what's going on here. One, two, three. Hello. All right. Um, so let's do this, right? Let's find out where we are. Okay. Come on. We don't have any modulation. We're keying up, aren't we? Yeah. Where are we? Okay, so uh, that's weird. Hello, channel 20. Hello, channel 20. Watch the channel selector here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's see if we got any difference in power. Let me turn this down so I don't feed back. Let's get a look at that RF meter back there. Where are we here, Mike? Okay, here we go. So we're just under two watts, but I go to the real channel 20 and we're just under three. So I go back here and we're under two. So I think I got a bad crystal, right? For two reasons, it's off, like whatever, 10 KCs, right? And the power is down. So I don't know, let's see. Okay, so what's this next one? Okay, let's try to find this channel now. Oh. oh, 21, 21, 21. Okay, so we're transmitting uh, 10 KCs low. Oh, this is going to be fun. If we're transmitting 10 KCs low on this crystal, riddle me this. What channel is 10 KCs below 23? Ready? What channel is one channel below 23? Below 23, frequency-wise. Hello, look at that. So 23 is 25, and our power is down. So here's what we have, and does it receive it? Hello, radio, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, ten, four. So, we have a crystal gone bad. Uh, let's, you know what, let's see if the Delta Tune works, but let's go to a channel we know works. And it, see, this radio seems to like one better. So let's run down to one. Actually, I should probably do it midway. So we'll go to like, I don't know, 11. Hey, I got used to that. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I don't think that's for transmit. Some of these old radios, We'll see if it's an open air device of some kind, it might be transmit, but let's see. Okay, so we're gonna key up here. One, two, three, one. Yeah, you can tell it's working. So Delta Tune works. Um, as we know, volume works. Hello, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. That's interesting. Oh, and our A and L. Um, let's uh, let's do this. Let's hook up to a real antenna and see how this A and L works. Before we do that, though, let's. Um, no, I'll do that. I'll save that for the next video. I don't want to turn the camera off. I want to leave this thing on while we're doing this. Uh, let's unplug this. Let's go to PA. I already know it's going to have PA audio, but how do I know that? Because, well, it has CB audio, right? And vice versa. If we checked it on the CB first, we'd at least know that partially works. Okay, let's see here. One, two, three, one, two. Oh, dude, that's cool. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, Robert, please come to the office. Please come to the office, uh, Robert. Uh, Dude, you're always on the phone again. Uh, tenth time today. Could you tell her to knock it off? All right. That was stupid. Okay, so there we go. 
does that in the that's interesting how that does that right we've got that hum can you hear that hum so i'm in pa mode and i have the hum now i don't because i'm plugged into the external speaker but i'm on pa mode but now i'm on <laughs> i'm on cb and have it plugged in the external speaker and the hum came back very very interesting oh and then it shuts off when i undo this so of course kitties don't try this at home well i don't care that's how i learned but anyway don't try this at home because this device is still plugged in yippers so let's take some screws off of this puppy and actually here's what i'm gonna do power it down and get rid of all that stuff Mm -hmm. That's pretty easy. <clears throat> pretty easy. So far, so good. Ugh, crap, come on. What do I have holding? What's holding you on? Seriously? Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, wow. This must, may have some sticky stuff in it. All right, there we go. Oh, she's been warm in there, eh? Okay, that's interesting. Well, let's look at the lid first. Hmm. Okay, so... Oh, wow, that's cool. It's got, like, foam there. And then over here on the lid, we have heat. And I'm noticing down here, we have heat. So let's line all this stuff up and see what we have. Nowhere else, right? So... This, I am going to assume, and we're unplugged now, comes from that light. And this is where the heat's coming from. And I don't know what that is, and I can't read those values. Uh, I'm going to say here's our final. But, um, and again, you know, speculating here. This must be a regulator circuit of some kind. Because uh, that PC board, or that, uh, what do you call it? That little strip for a heat sink there is kind of warm. All right, so here's what we got in the capac in the uh, power supply. So here is our transformer. Um, over, yeah, see, this is pretty common. Over here, let me see if I can get the camera up there. Over here is our AC input here. And then, like I was saying, see, look, they take a wire and they go from this lug over to here. And this switch right now is closed. So it will be a normally closed switch. And, right, yeah, normally closed when it's got connection here. And then this, when you plug the plug in, it'll push that lever down, lever for you folks across the pond, and it will break that connection. So that's pretty cool. So 12 volt comes in here. It's chassis grounded. 12 volt comes in here, goes to here. When it makes the connection, it goes back into this board, which shares probably the same hookup as the output as this power supply. And bada boom, bada bing. And that's a pretty big uh, filter cap in there. What is that sucker? That is 4,000 microfarad at 25 volts. Oh my gosh, look at that. Wow, pretty wild. Speaker set back there. Um, here are our two lights. Now our lights, this light lit up, right, when we keyed the radio, but this one's burned out. This one's burned out. I don't know if this is a pilot light or if this light goes on as an on-the-air light. So anyway, uh, leave in the comments what you would do. Would you put white LEDs in there? Um, blue LEDs or brand new incandescent bulbs to keep it uh, looking factory? Vintage, I should say, uh, or of its vintage. And then this light works, building up a lot of heat. And it looks good from the front panel. So let me know what you think about that. Should we replace that? And then look at this. We've got this wire on this light bulb just rolling. Look at that, rolling right on. I don't know if you can see that on camera. That's just rolling right on the, uh, the shaft there. Here's our, our crystals are on the other side here. These uh, 37 megahertz mixer crystals. 
So there's our, this is our crystal board. So we'll have to figure out which uh, crystal or crystals is for uh, that group, uh, that four channels there, the last four channels of this radio. So we're going to need to figure that out and probably put another crystal in there. But everything looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll go through and take these and mark these like this. And I usually just do one. Uh, the factory sometimes will do two like this, right? They'll go like that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just kind of mark where those are. And then we'll see. I don't know. It's just something I've been doing lately because um, I've been finding it how fascinating that a lot of these old radios really not really are not out of tune or by very far so that's pretty cool pretty cool um it's a mobile chassis right here i mean we all know right like every, we all know that these are mobile cbs basically in a box cbs mobile cbs in a box right and um It'd be interesting to find out what mobile radio that is. There's a PC board number over there. Right along that wall there, there's a PC board number. And that's pretty cool. And again, I'm going to stick with my theory that this is probably 73 or 74 vintage. I don't see any stampings or anything like that. And um, yeah, I just don't see anything. But pretty basic. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. So there we go. We checked all modes and functions. Everything works. We got a little bit of hum coming through. I just I don't really know anything about this radio. So here's our little access panel to the bottom. Um, I wish all the radios did that these days. Well, no, actually, I guess no. You know what? A lot of the modern ones do. All right, never mind. And that's why it's sticking. It that had foam in there. Or some sort of, yeah, some sort of a, like a foam, you know. And I like how they um, isolated this. And they didn't do it cheesy either. This is tin, right? This is tin. So this was their shade. And this light, it looked like it was kind of bleeding through here. So maybe I'll put a piece of tape along there. Anyway, let me know in the comments what, what I should do with that as far as the colors go. It seems to be in pretty good condition. I don't really see any scratches. There's no um, pitting on it at all. But there you go. That is the uh, JC Penny Pinto. And what is the model number of this sucker? It is a uh, a 9816235. That doesn't sound right. What is it for real? Okay, catalog number 9810607. I wonder if this is a mobile version. I'm going to look this up anyway because it would be neat to see what the mobile version is. I don't know one of, you know, sometimes the way this goes is the mobile version of this, I can get the service info and sometimes the other way. And I don't own SAMs that probably go this far that are actually this new. So anyway, it says catalog number right here, catalog number 9810607, 12 volt DC negative ground, 120 volt AC, two amp fuse, made in J-Pan, JC Penny Company, New York, New York. Where's the fuse? I don't see a fuse. Is there a fuse in there? There's a resistor. I don't see a, an actual fuse. Where's the fuse? Am I am I blind here? I don't see a fuse. Maybe they're talking about a two amp fuse here. But you know what? I don't see any kind of fusing or anything for the AC either. Oh, that's interesting. That is very interesting. Hmm. Well, you know, 1973. You know, fusers are for wusses, right? Suck it up, Buttercup. Anyway. That's uh, pretty interesting, That those heat markings. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let this percutute for a couple days uh, supervised. Now, generally, when I uh, let like the 12-volt the mobiles uh, percutute for a while, 
um, sit on the bench and run. Um, I, I'll leave them on 24-7. I don't really care about that. However, because this is AC power supply issue, there's that big old uh, Nippon uh, capacitor in there, which is a quality cap. Um, I Yeah, I don't want this to let go at night or something. And these are Nichicon caps. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool. Wow. And what's this one? This one back there is a Nippon Chemcon. Oh, pretty cool. Okay, so stay tuned for the update on this. Hopefully uh, all goes well. I probably more than likely have the proper mixer crystal for that. And we'll just dig into it a little bit more. Um, if you have one of these, uh, let me know how you like it. I, I think the receiver is going to be pretty nice. It sounded good on the walkie-talkie, but on air will be different. But th this whole uh, adjustable A&L really is, is really cool. So anyway, if you have one, um, let me know of its quirks. Let me know if they suck or if they're good or whatever. But this thing's clean. I've got a little tiny push in on this speaker grill. That's kind of a bummer. Um, but yeah, she's pretty clean. And I have the box. This did come in the box. However, the box is really thrashed. And no manual. All right. Thanks for watching. Cheers.